On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. And it's Wednesday, so that means we have a very special guest with us from the Melbourne Demons. I'm once again joined by a special guest host, Gemma Bastiani. Gemma, thanks for joining us on the pod. So excited to be here this week to talk to one of my favourite players. Yes, one of Gemma's favourite players, which happens to be Lauren Pierce, ruck extraordinaire at the Demons. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gem. feel a bit chuffed now. <laughs> <laughs> And you are joining us off the back of a record-breaking performance at Optus Stadium. What was the team's reaction to that? Did it feel a bit surreal? Um, I think after the game, you know, it was exciting to be a part of. Um, I think in the last quarter was probably the only time you sort of really paid attention to the scoreboard and was like, oh, my God, we've kicked kicked that many for the game. Um, yeah, it was nice to be a part of and... Obviously, we reflect back on it and we played some of our best footy we probably have over the last, what, six seasons. Um, so, yeah, just to be able to do that and not necessarily the score itself, but more just how we played, um, we were very happy with. Going into the game, what was the mindset, knowing that you were coming up against Frio over in WA, um, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, obviously uh, we knew it was going to be hot. Um, that's definitely not something you love playing in, but they have been a great side for many years and they're always competitive. Um, our mindset going in was just cracking in and doing what we needed to do. Um, I'm sure every other team is the same. Every, any opponent, you're just going to go in and try and be as hard as you can. So, no, we, we really, it really paid off for us and I think we just – really have a belief in ourselves this season uh, and our skills and, you know, playing our role for the team, which is a big thing. Uh, we don't have players that are trying to do everything for themselves and, and understand that to, to get the results that we want to, we have to really play well together and, and trust each other. You mentioned that you think it's like the best, one of the best performances you've had over the last six years at Melbourne. What, why do you think that was? I just think for games that we've played well in in the past, uh, we might have lost concentration, had lapses. We've never really been able to play four quarters of football. Uh, although, like, the first quarter, you know, was still quite tight. Um, we were still probably executing how we wanted to. Uh, so I think it's more just the all four-round quarters and performing in those that really, you know, made it be the best game that we've sort of played. We've, we've obviously had good quarters in the past, good halves and stuff, but just never a complete game. So Daisy kicked the five goals, which was she's a, one of only four players to ever kick five or more goals in a, a game in AFLW history. You've played with her for six years. How have you watched her as a player, as a leader, at, on field and off evolve over the last six years? She is just as good as what she was when I started with her. She has sort of changed her game and played in many positions and always tried to master what she's done. So obviously she's been quite new to the forward line, has a great kick in itself. So she hasn't had to work too much on those sort of aspects, but understanding like structures, she's always asking questions and trying to be the best that she can, even though she's been around the game one of the longest in the in the league, she's still wanting to learn every single session and wanting to get better. So I think just seeing that drive from her is something that we as a team really thrive off. Um, and I just I just love seeing her go to work and to get the five goals uh, shows she's still got it. Lauren, you say she's still got it, and there's murmurs around that this might be the last time we see Daisy Pierce in the blue and red. Do you think she can play on? Will she play on? I think she can play on and I reckon our whole team and probably the league uh, think she can play on. And, you know, Daisy hasn't made a decision yet on, on what she's doing. Uh, I think she still wants to be able to play, but at the same time, she needs to weigh up what's best for her and her family. Um, so for now, she's just focusing and she's had a conversation to us girls. She said, right now I'm focusing on playing, wanting to play finals, wanting to perform. She said at the end of the season, she'd probably love to keep playing. And she goes, but I won't be talking about that or making decisions until the end of the season happens. So 
I'm not sure what she's going to do. And obviously we'd love to see her at the days as long as we can have her. And if she can keep playing well, I'd bloody love that as well. (laughs) <laughs> you're not the only one um obviously we've got to ask you about taylor as well she's another demon who's having a massive impact in that forward line um what do you think she's done for the team and specifically that forward line she's someone that obviously and everyone's probably seen it as well she just competes competes in the air competes on the ground um she's really playing her role for us and when she came into the team I know she had conversations uh, with coaching staff of what she needs to do and they've said as long as you compete we'll be happy and we're we're sure you'll thrive off it and she's doing exactly that you know she even though probably started the season if she wasn't getting she's obviously been kicking a lot of goals but if she didn't necessarily have a massive game she actually did for us she was crushing packs who would want to stand in front of her? Glad her, she's on my team. Um, but, she, yeah, now she's really enjoying her time at the Gs and we're so happy that she's with us and I love watching her play and, and how happy she is uh, after games with her performance and then with the team's performance. And she's not the only one who stepped up this year, Lauren. We've seen a few Ds come up across the season, especially on Saturday. Who have you seen... Have, you know, we don't really want to single anyone out, but whose game have you enjoyed this year? I know she probably doesn't necessarily get recognised as having huge stats, but someone that I've really probably enjoyed watching is Shelley Heath. Um, her roles, she another role player. Uh, the, the things she does for us and the sacrifices she's makes, she makes with some of her games to help us and to help us succeed is just amazing. If you watch her in a game when she's tagging someone you know she her goal leading into it she's always just really wanting to shut that player down and and with that she has great speed so she can sort of do both um but she's someone that I think is really valuable for our team and I I love watching her play and have this season look I was hoping you would mention her I'm very happy that you have um (laughs) let's talk about you now though uh you've continued to be one of the best rocks in the competition which I know probably makes feel really uncomfortable that I've said that to you um (laughs) you're the only only rock in AFLW history to have had 20 hitouts and 20 disposals in a game and you've done it twice that's just an example um how have you seen your role as part of that team this year um, I think for me, like being one of the ones that have been there the longest and, and oldest, um, I think just leading by example and, you know, everyone will know I don't have the greatest kick um, or don't have the greatest skills some, sometimes. So for me, it's just cracking in and, and giving it my all uh, and ho- hopefully bringing energy to the team with talk and, and the things I do. So You know, I I don't see myself as someone that needs to stand up for everyone else to stand up. So I'm just happy cracking in, uh, trying to be as tough as I can for the team. Yeah, and Lauren, you've had some troubles with um, injuries and stuff over the years. Has it been hard sometimes to get yourself right to to play out a full season? Yeah, it's it's definitely hard. Um, it, It helps having, you know, our staff is very well across my issues um and have a great plan in place and although I don't always get on the track for every training session uh there's always things that I can do that's tailored to me uh to get the most out of my week and be prepared going into games um outside of footy like a lot of time is dedicated to recovery so sometimes it does feel like it's just work footy recovery um but when when the team's playing well, you know, you want to be involved, you want to play finals, you want to work hard. So you kind of do everything you can to to be on that track and to be able to play with the girls. So you sort of push everything aside and I'm always thankful that I'm able to play games. So that's always something I come back to when I get a bit down. It's like, well, I know I've got to do these things and I, I want to be doing more, but if I can get on the track at the end of the day, I'm so happy about that. You've had some support from Maggie Karras this year who did make her debut in round one. How have you seen that relationship on field evolve? Um, Well, off field, she's the best, like great relationship with her, Um, always asking questions, love working with her. Um, On field, she's learning each and every game, each and every training session. Um, For her, you know, her development from last season to this season has been immense and 
you know, not only does she hold her own out there, she competes hard, she does what's asked of her um, and that's all we can ever ask for. And if she, as I said before, like if she's got questions, she's always asking to try and get better. So love playing with her and it's at the start of the season, it was really nice to have a chop out from her. So hopefully uh, she's not far off making another return to the team. Lauren, we've seen the last few weeks the D's play some really good performances, as we've mentioned. But I wanted to ask, was the performance against the Crows a turning point for the team? Yeah, I think so. You know, we we weren't our best and they were very good. So when those two things marry up together, you get a serving. Um, so it's something we've we've looked back on and we've realised that we can't we can't drift out of games. We can't go into games certain ways, you know, the week leading into it. We have to prepare well. We have to be focused. We have to be ready alongside having a bit of fun so that your attitudes going into the game is, you know, you're there to enjoy it and to work hard. So that is something we've reflected on um, and, you know, building building each week uh, leading into finals. So, you know, it was probably a good good kick up the bum uh, during the year uh, to, to make us play some better footy. Well, off the back of that, you're, you've almost confirmed a top two spot. You're potentially going to finish on top of the ladder should things fall your way. Is that an, internally a really important thing for your group? I'd love a week off, so top two would be great. <laughs> um, for us, you know, we, we play footy for finals. We play footy to finish on top um, and we're trying to build momentum into that final series. So for us to, to play this weekend, we're definitely there to win, um, to work on last week's game, to fix up, you know, even though we had a good game, there are still areas for improvement, things to get better at. Um, and I think it's just working on those things this, se- this week. Obviously, we need to work hard. Carlton they're going to come out there uh, last, last sort of round of the season. Uh, with everything on the like sort of put out there so we know it's going to be a tough one but at least that will set us up well Uh, hopefully we get a win and hopefully we get that week off the next week you lost in the preliminary final last year Lauren I know it probably goes without saying but do you think the D's can go one better in 2022 I hope so um, I think I think our group of girls from last season to this season has really learnt off uh, that loss. Not just the loss, but the season itself. You know, we peaked towards the end of the year, um, had good momentum going in. So I think the only best, next best thing is to win those games. Um, and that's definitely a focus point for us. Uh, going into it we want to win everyone wants to win so how do we go about it what can we do so definitely looking forward to finals um, and hopefully it's a great result for us and you did mention you've got Carlton for the last game of the round uh, of the season uh, this weekend you're going to be coming up against all Australian ruck Bree Moody Um, how how are you preparing for that game and, and what do you make of that matchup uh, I, I love playing against girls that are sort of very similar. You know, she get, gets around the ball, great in the rut, great on the ground, great in the air. Um, it's a good challenge and obviously I love love that sort of thing. I haven't thought too much about the game yet, but I know I just have to work as hard as I can um, and think think about my game and what I can do. You know, you can't really control what others do. So that'll probably be my big focus leading into the game is just working hard and cracking in. <laughs> 